Hello everybody, this is HG Shaves here. I'm back with the video. Hope this finds you well and in good spirits. Today we have a mm, kind of a hodgepodge shave, as I normally like to do. Um, let's talk about something that I've already reviewed on this channel, which is the Gillette Tech. Of course, I've reviewed a bunch of different techs on this channel, but this particular one is a um, made in England, fully brass um, version. And so the way you know that it's this particular type is, well, it's got the diamond, um, you know, middle part on the bottom, and then it's got the oval slots, and you just weigh this and you could feel that it's totally, you know, filled out basically. They didn't make an aluminum version of this razor, and so that would obviously be lighter, but this particular version was sold under the number 24 set, I believe it was, and it weighs at um, 63 grams or something like that. And it just, it's nice because it does have a little bit more heft to it than other techs because like the you know, the fat handle, those are actually um, hollow, or at least semi-hollow on the inside. And so this just has a nice weight to it for, you know, a vintage um, razor. Of course, you could put a, you know, some kind of modern, heavier handle on this, but the balance point is really nice, and um, it's been great to come back to this razor. Um, had some really terrific shaves, did that thing where I wonder, why do I shave with anything else? This is terrific. So we'll be talking about the British Gillette Tech, something new to me in this tub that I, I'm not sure what this was, but I finished the soap and then I repurposed it. Um, this is Boelis, uh, Panama uh, 1924 is, I believe, the ascent name. And first off, I'd like to thank Frank for organizing the group buy of this. Um, the soap is kind of weird to buy. It's made in Italy and it's only sold at certain places here in the U.S. In addition, it's sold in these big um, kind of bricks. And so he was kind enough to organize this, took a whole shipment in from Italy, and then he split it up for us. So I received about, um, I think, two ounces or so of the soap. And this is already what we've gone down to. Um, it's been really great to use this. It's basically like cello in terms of the scent. It's that almond uh, marzipan thing. But the performance is just a little bit better. It's still a pretty simple uh, recipe. It does have tallow. I believe it's got um, coconut oil as well. But... Um, yeah, it's just a simple little soap, and it's just nice to use something that, again, it's just a little more simple, and um, that's been really nice to use. And again, thank you so much to Frank for organizing that. Um, Frank's a great guy if you don't know him, and he's also very good about sending out little samples, and he's very um, neat and kind of particular about the way he sends the samples in the little containers. So shout out to you, Frank. Um, for the brush today, let me just get it out of the water and check off some of it. We are using a Vault brush. At least I assume that's how you would pronounce it. Um, so made in Germany, 27 millimeter knot. This is the J2 that you can clearly see with this copper coin on the bottom. I think the copper coin is a very nice touch, um, especially for a high-end brush like this. And I must also thank my friend who sent me this brush along with two others to try out over the next coming weeks. Thank you very much. You know who you are. And um, yeah, so I've seen people use this this is the Stratos shape, I believe, and this is the J2, which is supposedly less dense than J1. I've never tried J1, so it doesn't really mean anything to me. But um, anyway, yeah, I do really like this copper coin. Um, I think that's a really um, classy touch, and the patina is not as bad as I would have thought. Um, uh, copper can patina quite quickly, you know, copper razors and whatnot, but this actually looks pretty good. So anyway, that's the knot. Um, we'll talk about it more as we go. Something interesting I wanted to point out was on a lot of these um, knots, you can see a little bit of like this kind of color white down at the bottom, but this is totally like it goes directly from the really dark hair to the really light hair. So I don't know if that means anything, but it's just something I noticed. So let's start and load the Boelis. I think that's how you say it. Again, no clue on that. So I guess this is kind of a European shape today, huh? Um, I suppose I should have used a, a European aftershave and then that would have made it a fully European one, but that's okay. Um, I like the aftershave I'll be using today as well. So this soap is just mindlessly easy to use. Um, if it's not kind of bubbling up like you on this, then just add a little water. Um, I think that this is probably the right way to load it. Um, and yeah, it's just easy. Anyway, um, you don't need to load very much. I'm going to overload because I make shaving videos and that's what we do. So let's call it right there and I'll grab some of this uh, excess 
from off the sides and supply it. Um, thank you all for the nice comments um, about the November, Movember uh, mustache here. I always appreciate the nice comments, you know. I um, feel like, uh, well, I, I feel like this is maybe how the uh, guys that have the very luscious beards feel when, you know, they, they walk into a room with people they don't know and the first thing they say is, wow, what an amazing beard you have. And then they go into great detail about their beard care and things like that. Um, anyway, so it's a little glimpse into that. I could never grow a beard, but anyway, uh, here we go. Let's start. And this knot, yeah, it's not overly dense. It's very soft. A little bit jelly, but not overly so. And most importantly for me, as you know, the backbone is not too stiff. So really in many ways, this is my kind of knot. Um, again, because this is a shaving channel, we like to dive into the nitty gritty, into the minutia, if you will. And I don't know, what don't I like about this brush? Well, not much. I mean, it holds onto the lather well, it releases it too, um, wants to go out there. And I just really had no issues um, working up the soap this week. Um, I mean, maybe if I used a more difficult to use base soap that I would, um, find more issues with this knot, but I really have nothing bad to say. Um, it's certainly expensive, but you know, that kind of is the trend at the moment for these kinds of knot. They're not super cheap. And I also am a little bit biased being, um, of German descent. Uh, I think our people are pretty good at making stuff. Um, one of my, I used to have a German, uh, piano tuner, um, who would tune the piano that I used to play like five, 10 years ago. And he would always come in to, to tune the German piano. Of course he would come and he would say, you know, our people are pretty good at making things when we're not busy starting wars, <laughs> which I always thought was just hysterical. Um, but anyway, I won't get too far off in the German tangent. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, uh, I think it's cool to see, uh, you know, um, a German, you know, being so uh, prominent in the, you know, high-end Badger market at the moment. I think, um, at least my perception of the German shaving products is that while many of them are good, like tobacco or... Uh, Anyway, some other things as well. Um, they're good products, but they're not, you know, in the artisan space and um, that's fine. But of course, many of us really appreciate it if they're in the artisan space because you feel like you can really reach out to these people and talk to them. And um, from, from what I've seen, I've, I've never talked to the owner of Vald, but um, it seems like he's very active and responsive and you know even when there have been issues with some of his um ordering website kind of things it seems like he was pretty on top of it and um you know that's something that we say a lot in music education is like you always know that at some point someone's gonna mess up right when you're playing music like it's not it's not gonna be perfect and so the question is then what do you do when that happens right and so, um, yeah, I always, always appreciate when people have a good response to things not going super well. Okay, so we're gonna start here with this lather. Just give me a minute to kind of tidy up and then I'll bring back in. I'm about to start the first pass. Okay, we're back and let's start with the first pass with the Gillette Tech made in England. So my big realization using this razor this week is normally I always tell people with tech razors and others, but especially with techs, I would always tell them to ride the cap as much as possible. And well, that certainly works with, for example, the flat bottom tech and some other ones. This one I found this week 
I was actually more comfortable if I had backed off on the uh, cap a little bit. So those of you who are astutely aware of razor angles, you might notice that I'm not writing the cap as much. Um, we're dealing with two days growth as usual. And also um, this is a, a Visimet blade with its, I think this is its 10th use. It's still feeling pretty good, but I'll probably toss it today or tomorrow or something. Lather is flying off, which is good. You know, it's funny, some of us um, who like to, you know, add a lot of water, we we like it when it falls off the razor, like as we're shaving like this, you know? But then some some others don't like the, so, sorry, let me back up. So they'll want to have that happen, but then they don't want to have it be messy during the building process. and. I'm not sure if there's a way to do both, like have it be that kind of um, easily, you know, falling off the razor, but then not make a mess in the beginning process. I'm not sure. Sorry about that drain. Not quite sure what's going on. But hopefully the cutting sound is coming through. Just a very nice mild to medium shaver. You can feel the blade, not too much, nothing crazy. So I'm gonna rinse and then bring it back in for pass number two in just a moment. Okay, here's pass number two. Wow, that looks really nice. And the brush has done a good job of holding on to it, but also easily releasing it too. Okay, let's go second pass across the grain mostly. So for those of you who have used cello in the past and enjoyed the scent, but maybe you didn't enjoy some other aspect of it. Um, maybe you should try the soap out sometime. Again, I don't recommend getting a whole brick because that's just such an investment. Um, and something I've heard about this soap too, I don't know if it's true. Well, I guess I'll assume it's true because it came from a reliable source, let's say, is that the soap can lose its scent a little bit if you you know don't use it for a while and then come back to it so if you have to buy a whole bunch then maybe you could you know carefully seal up um, the parts that you're not going to be using and or you just do what I do and I'm kind of planning to use this as often as I can um, until I've finished it, basically. Um, I don't think that should take too long, given the kinds of brushes I'll be using over the next few weeks. And yeah, frankly, it's just a really nice soap to use. So I'm definitely um, enjoying it. I've been using it almost every day for um, basically a week now. I mean, that's standard for me, so. It'll be more, you know, we'll see how it goes with the coming weeks. And uh, yeah, this razor is just, um, nice and nimble, easy to use. And pretty easily found. Um, certainly in the UK, 
We see these all the time. It's sort of like our version of, you know, it's it's like the American ball and oval tech. So it's pretty easy to find in England. Okay, great. Nice second pass. I'll win to come back for the final third pass. Okay, here's our final third pass. And here's the final third pass. Um, I wanted to mention about the tech as well. Sorry, not the tech. So um, it's kind of medium scented. It's not overly strong, but this kind of scent I think is easily enjoyed even in kind of small doses. You know, it's not like you're trying to pick out 10 different notes. Um, it's pretty straightforward, you know, almond, marzipan, that kind of thing. And admittedly, I never understood why people talking about these kinds of scents would, you know, interchange, is that a word? Interchangeably use almond and marzipan. And I looked up what marzipan was and I said, oh, okay, that makes sense. I don't think I've had marzipan before, which would definitely explain my ignorance to it. For a little professional update, um, I think some of you might know that I used to tour with a big band full time before I moved here to Chicago. And for those who don't know, big band in the jazz swing context is, you know, saxophones, trumpets, trombones, and then um, a rhythm section, which is piano, bass, drums, maybe guitar sometimes. Um, anyway, I used to tour with that band full time and now as of late, um, that band has been able to do kind of shorter tours and um, it was great to see some of those people, some of my old road road buddies, as we say. Um, they were just here in town and got to hang out with them more than, you know, I have in the past couple of years. So it was just a nice reminder of the kind of bonds that you make with those people when you're out on the road with them for, you know, at, at, in the most extreme cases, we were out for like three months at a time, not going home, just riding on the bus from city to city. And, um, you certainly get to know your fellow bandmates for better or for worse. Um, so yeah, it was great to see some of those people again. And also I'm very excited to be playing with that group again next month. Um, again, the silver lining of the pandemic, I suppose, is that that band can't really go out for three months at a time anymore. And so now they do shorter stints. And because of that, they're able to hire a more, you know, varied group of people. So they don't just have to hire people that can only do like you know, three months at a time. And so I'm very much looking forward to playing again with that band. Um, I think, what was the last gig I did with them? My last gig with that band was February, 2019. <laughs> so two and a half years already. And um, yeah, I just can't wait to play with them again for just a few days. And, um, you know, short enough to where I don't have to miss too many of my regular obligations, but it's also long enough and we're having to travel far enough that it, 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 it will feel like a little mini tour, you know? Just touching up all the spots and I think we're good, man. Terrific shave, not really surprising. Just this razor super easy to use, brush is super easy to use and the soap. So we got three winners today. All right, I'm gonna do my final rinse and then come back and talk to you over post shave in just a minute. All right, very satisfied with that three pass shave. Skin feels really nice and I do really love using the cold water uh, when it starts to get cooler here. Um, it's just a very satisfying, satisfying feeling um, after the shave. So for the after shave today, we're gonna be using number one by Zingari in collaboration with Byron Perfumes, a French perfumer. Basically, Byron made the scent and then um, Zingari made the soap and splash, 
this, they make a lot of products. Um, so it's no secret that I'm a fan of this balm and um, I have been wanting to try this scent for a long time because it's a rose oud kind of scent. Definitely rose forward though. And um, it's just, it is a little pricey because of, you know, they have to pay for the French person. And yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. But anyway, um, a few weeks ago, I finally was able to get this for very reasonable cost and it's lovely. It's kind of a fresh, crisp rose. It's not too heavy. I mean, it wouldn't be heavy, but there are some roses that I've used that are kind of, kind of cloying. I guess that's the word I use, but it's a very smooth, um, rose scent. And that is mostly what you smell. So if you don't like rose, don't get this. But if you do like rose, I can recommend this wholeheartedly. And this is the older balm formula. I don't think she makes this anymore because this is not Sego. It doesn't have, um, towel in it, but I have another one of these older bombs, uh, that formula and the unscented that I've used for years now. And I don't mind it. You know, um, I really like it regardless of the fact that it doesn't have towel. So I just wanted to mention that. Great. Awesome shave today. Really, really happy with that. Let's do a final recap. The Gillette tech, uh, weighs about 63 grams made in England, ball and handle, oval slot, base plate, and, oh, I forgot to mention too that the top cap usually has the Gillette um, kind of logo imprint on it. Um, I'm not sure why this one doesn't, maybe it's a mismatch, but um, that's also a way to easily identify that it's this razor, not another one, because they only started doing that Gillette imprint thing like later on in the production that wasn't on the original, you know, kind of text. So anyway, that's that's a great little razor. Um, I think it shaves super well, and there are a couple other people that um, feel the same way, so that's good. The Vald uh, Stratos J2 Knot. I can't find really anything bad to say about this. Um, again, if you don't like the kind of gel tip thing, then maybe this would be not right for you, but it's it's not overly jelly though. Like I have a couple of declaration knots that are certainly much more jelly than this. And I still enjoy those to be fair, but this is this is a really nice brush. Um, I, I, I like the kind of resin here. It's got some beautiful little details in it and the shape too is very comfortable. So two thumbs up um, for a uh, German brush, which again, I think is great. Um, and then we used the Boelis uh, soap here in my reused plastic tub. Uh, if you like cello, but you want to try something a little more premium, at least in the price point, who knows if it's really, you know, kind of worth that, but I think it is. Uh, it's been really enjoyable to use that. Thanks again to Frank for hooking me up with that. And also to my friend who loaned me the brush. So thank you so much. If you made it this far, as always, this has been HG Shades. We'll see you next time. Okay. Take care. Bye.